Hey, Tech Ventures students, welcome back to our class. Thank you very much for being here today. We're on day three. Hopefully, you had a chance to check your grades there using PowerSchool, and uh, we'll do that a couple times a week. You can always check your grades on your own uh, whenever you want. Your parents might even be helping out with that by checking your grades too. Today, we're going to be talking a little bit about the typing part of our class. We're going to try to help you develop a usable skill of what's called touch typing. In the past, if someone asked you to type in the alphabet, the way that you type the alphabet in might go a little something like this. You might go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, using that pointer finger. And when I watch students type, a lot of students are really good at typing with their pointer fingers. In fact, they're pretty fast at it. We're gonna be helping you to learn, and get a usable skill of something called touch typing. If you watch professionals type, a lot of your teachers, people who work on computers a lot, they don't poke at the keys with their pointer fingers. You're going to see them using a typing skill. Anybody watching this video would be able to develop a typing skill, um, not necessarily today, but before the end of the trimester. If you do these things, you should get pretty good at typing. What I'm going to do right now is talk about the home row. I'm going to talk about where your left hand fingers go on the home row keys. If you can see in the video, which I think you can, on the F key and on the letter J, there's a little bump. Our pointer fingers or our index fingers should go on F and J. I'm going to focus today only on the left hand. I'm going to focus on the fact that our home row fingers go on the letters A, S, D, and F. We want to get used to our fingers being on A, S, D, and F. Our thumb can be on or just above the space bar. And we're going to do a little typing today with our fingers on the home row of A, S, D, F. First, we're going to just type in um, seven letters. And the first time you type these in, you should type these in with your fingers in this position. And go ahead and watch. Use your eyes to look as much as you want or need to. Right now, I'm gonna start typing, but I'm not gonna go real fast. I want you to see the technique that's involved here. My wrist and fingers have a little curve to them. I'm not letting my wrist rest on the table. And again, if I move my fingers out of the way, I want you to be able to see those keys before I get going. Well, my left pinky is gonna be on the A key, so I'm gonna press A with my left pinky. And sure enough, on my screen, the letter A showed up. My left pointer finger is responsible for B. I need to move it from F to B. So I press B and then back to the home row. My left middle finger covers the next three keys. My left middle finger covers C. It's going to go down to C. When it goes back to the home row, it's going to press D. And when it goes up one more row, it's going to press E. So that middle finger stays busy when we're typing the alphabet. Finally, my left pointer finger is on F and my left pointer finger moves a little bit to G before it returns to the home row. I'm then gonna press space. What I'd like you to do at this time is I would like you to type in A, B, C, D, E, F, G, space, 10 times. Don't worry about going fast. Look as much as you want to, look as much as you need to. After 10 times, press enter. Your insertion point should go down to the next line. In your screen should look a little something like this. So maybe for the first time ever, you've started to do some touch typing. Uh, there's nobody that's going to be monitoring you or there's no cover to put over the keyboard right now or anything like that. But if you will practice these techniques, you're going to re get really good at touch typing. But you got to practice them the right way. So hopefully what you did is you typed in A, B, C, D, E, F, G 10 times. Your document called practice is looking like mine. And we're going to type it 10 more times. Now here's the challenge. You can't see this, but I'm placing my fingertips on the home row. A, S, D, F. I'm going to do the same thing. My thumb is on the space bar. I'm going to do the same thing, 
And this time I'm not gonna look. Am I gonna make some, I'm not gonna look at my fingers pressing the keys. Am I gonna make some mistakes? I am. I'll probably make some mistakes and you probably will too, but it's only through this method of having some discipline and not looking that we're gonna learn where these keys are. Now your eyes should be on the screen as you're typing to see if you make a mistake. For right now, if you make a mistake, don't worry about it. Just keep typing, pick up with the letter that you're trying to do. So right now, my eyes are on the screen. I'm not gonna watch my fingers press the keys and I'm gonna type it 10 more times while my eyes are on the screen. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, space. I'm gonna type that while you watch it one more time and then um, I'm gonna have it 10 times and that's what you're gonna have as well. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, space. Don't worry about going fast. Think about your technique for these 10 times on your document called practice, keep your eyes on the screen and don't look down at the keys. We'll see how it goes. Okay, by this point of class, you've been doing some typing. Hopefully you've had a chance to type those letters A, B, C, D, E, F, G. For some of you, it's the first time you've ever typed it. Uh, a lot of times when we're in person in this class, I'll hear students say, I did it. And that might be the first time that you actually were able to type A through G. You practice that as much as you want. We're gonna go through more of the alphabet in the coming days, but it's really important to start doing that the right way. The rest of your time for this class is going to be spent having time to work on your summer thing drawing. I've gotten some questions about should I turn this in or share it or anything like that. We're really just going to use this summer thing drawing to develop our drawing skills and try to get better at drawing. I'm going to show you guys just one new thing today on this drawing. I'm going to go ahead and um, zoom in just uh, a level or two here. I'm not even going to be necessarily on my drawing. but. Um, every once in a while I'll have a student who wants to make a certain shape and they might use lines. I'm going to go to the line tool and I'm going to draw some lines and basically going to connect these four lines just because it's simple to do it this way and it basically turns out to look like a rectangle. If you use lines to form a shape of some sort, you'll notice that on the toolbar there's, there's no paint bucket, there's no fill color. You, you won't be able to fill that in. If you use shapes, there's quite a few shapes. There are obviously a rectangle you'd be able to use a rectangle for. If you require a specialized shape that you wanna be able to fill in, I'm gonna teach you how to do that right now. So let me get back here. I'm gonna get rid of those four lines that I just drew. And I'm going to go back to the line tool, but I'm going to click on that down arrow and I'm going to choose one called polyline. Poly means many. Of course, line means lines. So when I click on polyline, you might be able to hear through the microphone a series of clicks that I'm going to be doing. And it's just going to be um, a silly shape, but I'm going to go ahead and click. It starts the line. I'm going to drag and click again and for this one another click. And then finally, when I come back, I'm going to have a triangle. If I click, it closes that triangle up. And the nice thing about that is my fill color can be used. I can make that shape, whatever that shape is that you drew, be any color. Remember, you have the ability to change your background color. You have the ability to change the level that things are at, which layer goes where. This was a diving board, and if I wanted that to go back behind something using order, I can choose send to back. And then you can't see it. You probably won't want to do that very often. But remember, you can change the order of things. You can group things. We grouped these chairs, these uh, rectangles together to become a chair, and grouping was a thing too. Any of that stuff on the previous videos at Schoology, you can see that. And for the remaining time, 
would you please develop your drawing, your summer thing drawing a little bit further? This should take you to the end of the class. Thank you. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.